Thank you. Thank you so much, Yaron. And um, I would like to thank again the organizers for organizing uh, for this um, incredible intellectual feast and for giving me a reason to start thinking about this, uh, this chapter in a more organized way. Although what I'm presenting is really very much uh, a work in progress and I'm looking forward to your criticism, uh, comments, questions, doubts uh, and suggestions. I also want to make a general geographic uh, um, comment that because I am working now, have been working now on the material from uh, what was Eastern Galicia, now pretty much Western Ukraine, and uh, as this is a multi-ethnic area that was changing borders and political allegiances and political, uh, um, everything is political including uh, uh, geographic terms, uh, I'm using Polish geographic terms because for Jews in questions, these were the geographic names that they've been socialized to, either Polish or Yiddish terms, but of course these are today uh, cities, uh, towns and villages in Western Ukraine. Uh, so they all have a slightly different uh, pronunciation. And let me start with, uh, with an interview uh, that I, um, I had an opportunity to, uh, to have uh, a few years ago in 2017 uh, with a survivor from um, Borisław, Borislav uh, Matez Heilig. I was uh, sitting in his beautiful garden, uh, he and his wife, and they were talking about their experience, uh, their experiences in Borisław ghetto, in a labor camp, and how he came to build an extremely successful hiding place in a office space. Um, it was so well done that uh, the family who moved into that house after the war and lived there for decades and decades never found this hiding place. And only when he uh, came with, to bring his uh, family on one of those uh, trips back home, uh, he opened a secret opening and the uh, inhabitants of that space were uh, terribly surprised to see uh, the history that that uh, uh, building had hidden. Uh, but he went to that hiding place with a young uh, girl, a teenager, uh, who after the war became his wife. Um, he chose her, she was pretty, her parents gave their permission, understanding that this was her opportunity to survive. And she was uh, in this hiding place. She became pregnant twice. Um, her, hi her husband, her then boyfriend, partner, uh, brought a Polish uh, physician he had known before the war. He blindf um, uh, blindfolded him, brought him in the middle of the night, and he performed uh, abortion. She then uh, um, had several children and was very successful uh, successful uh, marriage and happy, fami happy family. Now, uh, on the side, um, uh, the story of medical intervention that saved her life, it was very clear to both of them that she could not have been pregnant and give birth in hiding, that this whole story was told by him. She was completely silent throughout this whole uh, um, aspect of the interview and I must say I didn't dare to take her to the side and kind of get her side of the story and it's too late to to ask her now I think that today maybe I would have been more proactive trying to um, to ask her about her experience and her thoughts of uh, on what happened but without a doubt and it was already mentioned in previous sessions abortions and births in forest bunkers and in hiding places that were constructed and in towns and villages in Eastern Europe, in Central Europe and in my material specifically in Western Ukraine are very frequently mentioned in testimonies. They're really a trope in diaries and memoirs and interviews, but uh, they're always coming from witnesses, from people who were in those hiding places with the woman who uh, was pregnant, with the woman who had 
abortion with a woman who experienced uh, stillbirth, uh, they're not coming from um, women themselves. And even when medical uh, attention is given when um, either a Jewish doctor is present in the hiding place or non-Jewish doctor is brought into the hiding place, I also don't really have their accounts of, of, these, uh, of these events, but uh, it's certainly part of a much bigger picture of health matters, health crisis, uh, illness, um, and keeping healthy in hiding places, which was essential to staying alive. But uh, illness and staying healthy, while so essential, and are mentioned as crucial uh, by survivors, um, they are not as thoroughly described unless uh, uh, these are accounts of physicians them themselves. And this is something that I didn't anticipate when I started looking into this material. I thought I will find a lot more coming from Jews who got sick or Jews who uh, cared for other, other Jews who were not uh, trained in, uh, in medicine. Uh, but in those cases, these are very kind of uh, superficial, very quick uh, uh, mentions of uh, what happened and what was uh, done. So the important tropes is, um, are abortions and births. Um, uh, many, many testimonies uh, uh, mention uh, skin dise diseases, uh, specifically open sores and infections, uh, losing teeth, going white, and muscle atrophy. Uh, and then there is a whole layer of um, a discussion of a health result of, from hiding that comes after the war, uh, when Jewish and TOS organization was mentioned earlier. So TOS renewed its activities after the war, and they are checking survivors, and they comment on conditions that people who had been hiding uh, are complaining of and suffering from. So there are sort of temporarily uh, and also thematically uh, two layers to consider. And there is a big question of what it means to die in hiding from quote unquote natural causes. Uh, I just came uh, from Warsaw, there was a, a big um, celebration of uh, uh, my Dr. Vater, my, my first advisor at Warsaw University, whose uh, mother, whose Jewish mother was um, hidden by her Polish Catholic husband and gave birth to my future advisor in Warsaw in 1943 and died shortly after giving birth to him. The baby survived uh, and, um, and grew up to be a wonderful historian and sociologist. Uh, but uh, he told me in, in very, um, um, in very uh, uh, strong uh, language that his mother's death had nothing to do with the war, nothing to do with the Holocaust, nothing to do with occupation. This was a completely natural causes kind of death. And, you know, I wonder because I am quite sure that she was not taken to hospital. She could not be treated as she would have been treated in normal time. But uh, this is in kind of family history memory filed under natural cause death. Uh, following in a, a lot of ways uh, to what was already said, specific, especially, especially by Olga talking about Vapniarka, uh, a big topic in accounts of hiding is avoiding illness. Uh, this health regime that people try to keep in hiding and especially if they have a physician among them, it seems that those physicians take absolutely self-appoint themselves to this position of leadership, of telling people how to arrange hiding life better so that they would not get sick. So one of the accounts of this comes from a, a diary of Moshe Maltz, of two families hiding together, uh, the Maltzes and the Kindlers, uh, hidden by their pre-war acquaintance, Franciszka Halamajowa in Sokal. Uh, and Moshe Maltz recalls that Dr. Uh, David Kindler, who was a renowned doctor in Sokal before the war and a Zionist activist, uh, uh, tried to, as he puts it, to improve sanitary conditions in our hayloft. He has prized loose two shingles 
from the roof to let little fresh air and more daylight, which is important especially for the children. He has asked Mrs. Salamayova for two pieces of glass with which to close the empty spaces in the roof in case of rain. Dr. Kindler insists that we frequently launder and change our underwear to prevent illness, especially tough typhoid fever, which he explains thrives whether hygiene is, whenever hygiene is poor. So he is giving those Jews in hiding, uh, hygiene and public health uh, lessons and explains to them how to proceed. He also organizes the whole routine of catching a lice uh, and malts Recalls each one of us has a little cup of water. When we wake up in the morning, we pick fleas from our blankets, clothes, and bodies and dunk them in the water until they drown. Um, and many, many more cases of this as well, and especially again when physicians are involved. So, in the case of Baruch Milch, a, a physician from Podwołoczyska, who after losing his uh, wife and child hides together with another physician, his brother-in-law, Jakub uh, Weinlos, in a village of Czerwonogród. They are hiding in a place dug under kitchen floor and they keep ourselves busy and healthy by squeezing the lies that multiplied in our clothes, uh, which we never took off. So again, uh, he's, uh, he's making a clear connection. Trying to avoid the disease, they washed themselves and their underwear as often as possible uh, and competed in catching lice, introducing an almost daily ritual of, hide, of fire, hunting for insects that milk compared to a daily prayer. And um, I have a whole collection of what uh, people in hiding make of this ritual of, hide, of um, catching lice, which they saw as prevention uh, of uh, getting sick uh, in hiding. Uh, but uh, hiding uh, took heavy psychological and physical toll. Both men and women suffered from ailments due to malnutrition, stress, and depression. Accounts suggest nervous breakdowns irresponsive of, um, irrespective I'm sorry, of gender and age. People lost teeth, suffered from muscle atrophy, and her, as I said early, turned prematurely uh, white. Uh, some developed nervous tics and painful skin conditions. In their testimony, survivors bring up physical ailments as a matter of fact without necessarily dwelling uh, on detailing the symptoms. So, for example, a group of Jews hiding in a forest near Skawa were described uh, as living corpses, barefoot, or they describe themselves rather, uh, in tatters, swollen and sick, but you know, what was the nature of their sickness, I, I don't know. Physicians had a unique insight into their health and consequences of the conditions of hiding. Ludwig Landau, father of Ida Fink, the, the writer, began hiding with a peasant in the vicinity of Zbarasz. Um, he noted, at some time, after some time, I realized that Bilinski, the guy who is hiding him, is starving me. He brought food down to me less and less and of lesser and lesser quality. I began wondering uh, that he, uh, I, would, I began worrying that he would simply starve me. I was exhausted and as a physician, I was aware of the fact that I would not be able to manage it for much longer. So he makes a decision to leave that hiding place and look for another with his medical understanding of how much his body uh, in, may or may not be able uh, to take. Milch and his brother-in-law complain, uh, Milch writes about it, actually his brother-in-law also left a testimony and doesn't write about physical ailments, but Milch does, complains of uh, various pains and diseases, headaches, losing teeth, and a uh, nervous tick um, while in this hall under the floor. Uh, Giza Ferber and her husband, who hid in a bunker in Buchach, uh, awaiting the return of the Red Army, recalled that they were, quote, all covered with ulcers and scabies like lepers. And this notion of lepers, again, is very common. Um, how people cared for other Jews in hiding who were sick 
uh, is very, um, uh, has very little detailed records. So for example, in a case of a well-known group who hide in a cave near Bilcha's water, this is a, an incredible Yiddish uh, memoir, but also oral interviews of children who were in this group. Um, uh, Sarah Stermer and her family, uh, one of the members of this group begs her husband when she hears that the only remaining member of her family still alive is hiding alone and it's a 12 year old boy who is hiding alone in the forest and he's sick. Again, she doesn't say what, what happens to him, so her husband eventually brings him, manages to organize it, brings him to the, uh, to the uh, cave and she writes, um, Mendel brought the boy to the cave, uh, the, cave the, bo the boy suffered from skin diseases and looked terrible. We had to set up a separate sleeping place for him so that we would now not become all infected from him. But again, I only have that snippet of uh, information. Uh, there was rarely actual medical expertise available, but at times it did happen. And I, I have a couple of interesting cases. One is from the Taylor of Moshe Maltz, um, where his uh, sister, Hayat Dvora Maltz, became uh, gravely ill with uh, tuberculosis of the bones. But they have a doctor with them. And in fact, Dr. Kindler at first gives her some medication from the supplies he had brought with himself to the hiding place. But Maltz comments, but what, can, what good does, uh, does it do? We can't give Chaya Dvora what she really needs, fresh air and freedom. I mean, she obviously needs more than fresh air and freedom, but her being sick, trying to cough without sound, uh, running high fever without being able to breathe, uh, certainly makes her suffering uh, even uh, even more uh, difficult, and despite the efforts of the family that really dance, of, dance on her, catches her, uh, uh, the, the lice on her, f tries to feed her as good of food as they have access to, she, uh, the young woman, passed, uh, passed away uh, before liberation. Another account comes from um, the diary of Isidor Hecht, an unpublished diary I was able to get my hands on, thanks to uh, his wonderful granddaughter, and he's not a medical doctor, but he completed studies as a vet uh, before the war and under the Soviet occupation uh, um, works as a vet. He hides in a, with a group of other Jews, and in this group there's a close friend of his, Philip Mandel, a local dentist from the town of Zhukiv, Zhukiv today. Mandel is sick with tuberculosis, it's unclear from the diary whether he was sick before or he became sick in hiding. They are hiding in very difficult conditions in a stable. Um, and uh, uh, Hecht notes, I treat Philip without his knowledge because he would not have trusted me. I wonder if this is because he's a vet and not an MD. Uh, he allows me to give him only injections of calcium, but refuses to take medications against fever. So I add them to his milk without his knowledge and his status improves. He, caught, uh, he coughs less and his fever has got da go da gone down today to 36.6 Celsius. Celsius. If it continues, he may recover completely, yes I know, without, uh, a cup, within a couple of days. Hemorrhages do not repeat themselves and he was already um, a candidate for the other world. Now, uh, this optimism is premature and Mandel uh, lives to see liberation but dies a few days later. But what it also means is Hecht, but also Kindler and a few other physicians actually uh, use medications, they use prescriptions, they write uh, prescriptions to local pharmacies uh, that uh, uh, realize those prescriptions and they use all kinds of interesting tricks like they don't sign prescriptions so the pharmacist would not be charged by assisting a Jew but they know their handwriting because they are local doctors. Uh, but of course they only have access to that much and conditions are usually very, very difficult uh, in places in which people are hiding for months and months uh, on end. Uh, let me just say uh, two last comments. 
One is that there is a fascinating notion that I see in many ego documents from hiding, which is a comment about people staying healthy. And I'm, you know, there are phys physicians here. For me, I have two PhDs in history. I have no way of understanding it. Whether this is a self-perception, when people say, amazing, I've been, uh, you know, um, living in a forest, uh, living on close to no food, and I was never sick for a year and a half, for two years, I never once had a fever. Um, and only when the liberation comes, their bodies fall apart. They really get sick. And then there is a second interesting timing issue when people say, and it's a massive phenomenon in the sources I've seen, comes spring and early summer of 44, and people start being sick. And they say, if the liberation didn't come, and for Western Ukraine, it came from late spring to early summer of 44, depending where you are on the map, I would not have survived. The, the liberation really came last <coughs> moment for me. So I wonder if this is perception back, uh, or really they had only, the bodies had the ability to take those conditions for a year, for a year and a half, and then even the healthy people just uh, uh, went into uh, a crisis, uh, crisis mode. And then there is a question of what happens after liberation, when people, A, people who are even uh, uh, healthy, seemingly uh, strangely healthy, uh, become ill uh, and require medical attention and need to be um, nursed back to health, and people who deal directly with uh, issues that are the result of hiding, most often these are amputations of toes, uh, uh, frostbites that they experienced in a forest, uh, and a result <coughs> of lack of vitamin D for children, but this is very few children, since very few, especially young children, actually did go and survive in hiding. So I'm leaving you with these preliminary uh, findings with a lot of questions, and I hope that especially the real PhDs, i.e. physicians, will be able to offer some insights. Thank you very much.